<laughs> it's, it's really hard to pull this battery into frame without covering my whole face. What's up? I'm Ive. I enjoy solar power. I love power and stuff from the sun, saving a little coin and being prepared in the process, right? This is the Ampere Time 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. It was sent to me by them. This is my second time receiving a battery. This one is very interesting. It has some features that differentiate it from the other one that I have. Let's talk about it in a second. You know, I'm into power stations, but let me just summarize this situation for you. These batteries are dead simple, extremely capable, and very affordable. And I think that's something all of us should consider. It's a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. You do the math, volt times amps, it's a 1280 watt hour battery. You put that into perspective, it's 1200 watts, for what around four hundred dollars which is a typical going rate for a lot of these batteries some are a little more some are a little less the interesting thing about this one compared to another one i did a video on is this max discharge and charge rate is 100 amps the other one could be discharged at 100 amps but could only be charged at up to 50 amps that basically means that you can fully charge and discharge this thing at a hundred <laughs> <laughs> at 1280 watts that's considered to be a 1c rate how i understand c rates 1c rate is just 100 percent we hear people talk about 0.2 c rate 0.5 c rate that's just 20 percent 50 percent it's very simple it took me a while to figure that out but i did now the cycle life on this one is also interesting and i hate to keep comparing it to the other battery that i did the video on but this cycle life is more in line with what I'm used to. This one says 4,000 times. Now, the other one made it a point to say 1,000 cycles of charge. And it had to do with what C rate you use, you charge and discharge it at. This one just says 4,000. I'm sure that there's a C rate that you could charge this at that would greatly um, reduce the number of cycles. But I don't think it's going to go down to 1,000. And here's my theory. An interesting thing about this battery is it's a little bit lighter than my other battery. So this one is the battery that I kind of move and shake with and I carry around the house from downstairs to upstairs to charge stuff with. And I think it's because maybe the other battery had to put more cells inside of it to get that 1280 watt hour capacity, maybe they're B grade cells, whereas this one probably has better cells in it. I don't know if they're A grade, but they're, they could be better, which is why it's lighter. That's all speculation on my part, but when you combine the fact that it's lighter with the fact that it has more cycle life, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Who am I? It's just my second battery. Y'all let me know if I'm tripping or not. The Ampere Time battery came with a grip of documentation, really cool, nicely written, animated stuff. It looks like good quality documentation. So everything you would want to know about it is right there in this booklet. There's a service and warranty card. Check the site for the specifics about their warranty, but it's really just an overall impressive package. Now, Ampere Time did uh, send me also a battery charger which I think is very important for you guys to know about and to, to think about because these batteries, look, it's not complicated to use these dips. I'm gonna make a separate video about like how you charge and discharge, but it came with a battery charger. You can see it right here. You basically just plug it into the wall. It charges at about 300 watts. So you could charge this battery up to full in maybe about four hours or so. So that's something to consider. That particular battery charger is a 100 amp, no, 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 it's a, <laughs> it's a 20 amp hour, a 20 amp rated charger. You can get higher capacity chargers, but they're very expensive. You can also get lower capacity chargers, but the dollar to amp charging rate is not worth it. You might as well spend a hundred bucks, but here's a twister. If you get a smaller battery charger, you can typically charge these batteries up with a smaller power station. Cause if you have a power station that's limited to 300 watt uh, output on the inverter, then you probably wouldn't want to try and charge this battery, which begs the question, is a 20 amp charger really right for you? I would think like a 10 amp would be ideal, which would be like 150, 160, 170 watts going into the battery, because then it becomes a more um, ideal pairing of battery with smaller power station to get longevity out of your power station a little bit at a time, maybe a hundred watts. And you could charge that battery from that power station as well using the AC battery charger. I hope you're keeping up. I'm gonna do a video about it, I promise. And it's gonna be a cool but simple one. The battery came with two sets of lugs, 
Not sure why, but thank you. <laughs> so you have some replacements. It also came with some lug covers, which is just good for storing it and not having a problem. Um, at the connection types or the lug size, I believe is M8. And I also like that in their documentation, they spoke to the size. I remember vividly seeing on their website, it's saying what the connector type. Let me see if the booklet says it in here. It may. Yes, the instruction booklet does have what type of bolts they are. They are M8s. <laughs> they even make it a point in the booklet to say that you could replace them with longer M8 bolts based on your needs. The reason why that is applicable is sometimes when you start to put these little eyelet connectors on there, the M8 bolts are very short. So if you need to put like two or three ring terminals or eyelet terminals on there, then you would need a longer bolt to actually whatever. So that's something that I think that, that I, I'm really impressed with the documentation. Very. These batteries are not a perfect solution to have in a smaller portable power station, but they are a solution when there are very little other solutions except for buying external or extendable batteries from companies that offer them. Not everybody does. I feel like in the smaller portable power station bracket, EcoFlow is the only one that really had an extended or an external battery. And their new version, I don't know if they're going to have them, the River uh, 2. So these things are really a good option, especially when you consider the price per watt hour. I mean, 400, that's what, 33 cents a watt, 34 cents, 40 cents a watt. If you could get them at like about $400, something to really consider. One thing I forgot is that these can be connected in series and parallel. <laughs> the other brand that I did, um, the battery that I got could not be connected in series, but they sold one that could be connected in series. But this one can be connected up to four batteries in series and parallel. Good stuff to know. So these batteries, just like any other battery chemistry, has a particular range by which it can be charged, discharged, and even stored. The charging range is zero degrees Celsius to about 50 degrees Celsius. I like dealing in Celsius because that's what all of these batteries deal in. Um, also computers deal in that. You just have to translate it. It translates to about freezing to just stupid hot. So 32 degrees to about 114 degrees. And then the discharging temperature is a little more lenient. If you charge these batteries when they're too hot and you charge these batteries when they're too cold, then you could damage them. That's why they tell you the range. So zero to 50 for charging. And then discharging is negative 20 degrees Celsius up to 60 degrees Celsius. In Fahrenheit, that is negative four degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then they have a storage temperature, which is pretty much the same for discharging. Negative 10 to 50 Celsius. So, eh, you know, who cares? Read your documentation if you care. <laughs> Can I just say that one thing I don't like about this battery is there's no useful information actually on the battery. The other battery that I got had tons of useful information on there. It had like the temperature range, the uh, amp range at which you should charge it and discharge it. It would have been cool to see that on the ampere time, but still, still on charging they do in this documentation say that they recommend 20 amps so even though you can go higher that's the recommended i would stick at about 20 amps especially for us who are like new to this because that's the amount of amps you can get and charge from uh, these devices that you could buy off like Amazon, these battery chargers you can get. So 20 amps is good. Now, typically what I do is I do charge these batteries from my little PowerWorks MPPT charge controller. And sometimes I charge them from the charger that they gave me. I also have another charger. They are both at 20 amps. And I paid about $100 for the first one. They sent me the second one with the battery. The charging it from the wall outlet is the best option. Before I even got into solar, I wanted something like this to be able to just get power from the wall, store it up right before a storm, and then have some uh, power for when the power went out. You can easily pair a little Best Tech inverter with this. The 500 watt inverter actually has the clamps and it has the... Uh, ringlets or eyelets on them so you could pop this right on it and then you have an inverter you get your battery charger and you got like a little power station basically without the mppt charge controller that's what makes it a solar power station but other than that you could charge and discharge with just those two devices videos coming soon on that when it's out it'll be right there it is i